33. Complete and balance the equations of the following reactions, each of which could be used to remove hydrogen sulfide from natural gas. And then we have letter A. So we have calcium hydroxide, CaOH2 solid plus uh, H2S, right, hydrogen sulfide. And we just need to make the products. Okay, so we've done tons of problems like this already, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this a little bit bigger. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to find out what the ions were of the compounds that they gave us. Because if I have two compounds reacting together, chances are I'm going to have two products that will be produced. This is just a fancy double displacement reaction or double replacement. It doesn't matter. But basically, the outers go with outers and the inners go with inners when we make the new compound or the, the two new compounds, right? But I first need to find out what the ions were here. Now, OH, right? We should be seeing this, right? And specifically calcium hydroxide, right? Calcium hydroxide is a strong, a strong base. It's one of your six bases that you should memorize. And since there is an H in front of here, right? I know that this is an acid. Now, however, this is not on your list of six axes, acids that you should memorize. So it's classified as a weak acid, but still it's an acid nonetheless. So this is technically just an, a base plus an acid, an acid base reaction, right? So let's see, let's see what those ions were, right? Let's work with calcium hydroxide first. If I have CaOH2, I know that the break is going to be, be between the calcium and the hydroxide, right? So use those subscripts to crisscross back up. I had one calcium and I had two hydroxides. The one crisscrosses up telling me that I have a minus one for uh, OH and the two crisscrosses up telling me that I have calcium as a plus two, right? The pluses are in the front, the negatives are in the back. So I have Ca plus two with an OH minus one. Those were the two ions that came together to form calcium hydroxide. Now we just got to do the same thing here for H2S. Use the subscripts. I had two hydrogens and I had one sulfur, right? So let's see. This two crisscrosses up telling me that I had a negative two for my sulfur. This one crisscrosses up telling me that I had a plus one for my hydrogen. So I have an H that was a plus one and an S which was a minus two. These are your ions now that you're going to be doing outer with outer, inner with inner. If you think of this as like a box, right? The outer ones of the box would make the new compound. So the Ca plus two and the S2 minus, those would form a new compound. And then the inners go with the inners. That would be a new compound. So the yellows make a compound together and the blues make a compound together. doesn't matter which one you do first. Let's do the one with the calcium, so the yellow one. So now I have calcium, that's a 2 plus, reacting with S2 minus. Now we use those charges to crisscross down to find the compound. So this 2 would tell me that I have two sulfurs and this 2 tells me that I have two calciums. So as of right now, it's Ca2S2. However, this is a ionic compound. And remember, ionic compounds, right, metal and a non-metal, they need to be simplified at all costs. So if I have two calciums and two sulfurs, that's not the most uh, simplified. I can divide each by two to get an even simplified, more simplified compound. Two divided by two is one and two divided by two is one. So this would basically be CaS, right? You could put one and one, but usually you don't really see ones. So this would just be calcium sulfide, CaS. Plus, now we just gotta do the blues. And remember, the pluses go in the front, the minuses go in the back, it's just good practice. So I have H plus one, right? Coming in with OH minus one. The one tells me that I need one hydroxide. 
This one tells me that I need one H. So it would be H O H, but this one kind of gets reworked as saying that there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. So H two O H whoop H two O. And H2O is a liquid, right? Now, if you wanted to find the solubility of CAS, right, calcium sulfide, you would have to look on your solubility chart, right? Now, on the solubility chart, it would say that the S's, right, sulfide, 2 minus, they are usually insoluble, which means that they are usually a solid. So you might think, I put a solid here. But there are exceptions, and the exceptions are if the other atom that is paired with the sulfur, right, is either in a group one, a group two, or if it's ammonia, right? Chances are just notice for group one, group two, because there are other ions that make this uh, in uh, soluble as well. But in this case, calcium is a group two right? Calcium is in the second group. So I have an exception. And if there is an exception, all of these would tell you that that would be aqueous. It would dissolve in uh, an aqueous medium. So it's aqueous. Now all I got to do is I just got to balance, right? So let's see. I have one sulfur here. I got one sulfur here. So that checks out. I got one calcium. I got one calcium, right? But now I have two oxygens, right? And I only have one oxygen here. So chances are I need to put a number here. I want to get to two, right? Two oxygens. I only have one. So what number am I going to have to put here? Definitely a two, right? And now this tells me that I have two times two. So I have a total of four hydrogens here. Let's see if it matches. I got two hydrogen here plus two hydrogen here. So two plus two is four. And that equals two, four. So there we go. This is it. This is your balanced equation. And yeah, not, nothing more to that. I hope this helped, guys. If it did, hit the like button. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep studying hard, and I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Okay, bye-bye.